This is Twit. Rob is going to be brave and kick us off uh, talking about the, uh, the the big news from this week. In fact, before we got the show started, somebody in our chat room said, did you see this news? And we're like, yes, we saw that news. That's probably what we're going to be talking about for most of the show. So, Rob, in in the way that only you can, take it over and tell us what the uh, what the latest drama is in the open source world. So last week, Jeff and I shared some overlapping stories involving some drama fighting about rust being in the kernel and and then he evolved into hector martin getting involved and and saying i'm out of here removing himself as the maintainer for the apple silicon uh kernel code and deciding he was no longer going to upstream asahi code into the kernel well this week the plot thickens and there is a lot to update everyone Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try to hit the high points in in the order that that they happen that they came out. So last week it was hinted that Apple Silicon maintainer, uh, co-maintainer, I mean Sven Peter, uh, may find a way to keep upstreaming into the Linux kernel. And good news, shortly after the show, it was confirmed that Sven will keep patches going upstream. Uh, and helping him will be another existing Asahi developer that I haven't really heard of. I think he's only been around for a year. His name is, I may say this wrong, I'm sure I am, uh, Janny Grunau. Uh, so Janny has uh, been working on the downstream Asahi kernel well, well since April of um, as well as working on a number of drivers. Uh, Janny has the blessing of both Sven and Hector Martin. But with this blessing comes some other bad news for Asahi Linux, at least a few days later, where the founder and lead project uh, developer on Asahi Linux, Hector Martin, uh, has announced he is resigning as, as the lead developer stating it's become less fun over time you know, a lot of users are you know are, are expressing frustrations that they don't support the m3 the m4 or certain features aren't working and it's just not being fun anymore here's the quote from what he said hector martin says quote i'm resigning as lead of the sahi project effective immediately the project will continue without me I'm working with the rest of the team to handle transfer of responsibilities and administrative credentials. My personal Patreon will be paused, and those who support me personally are encouraged to transfer their support to the Sahi Linux Open Collective. Uh, GitHub sponsors uh, does not allow him to, me to unilaterally pause payments, but my sponsors will be notified of this change so they can manually cancel their sponsorships. I want to thank the entire Asahi Linux team without whom I would have never gotten anywhere alone. You all know who you are. I also give my utmost gratitude to all my Patreon and GitHub sponsors who made the project a viable reality to begin with. <clears throat> and from me, you know, we thank you too, Hector, for your hard work. Yeah. And it sounds like many aspects of the project you know, we're becoming frustrated. I can understand that. And this fight over the kernel maintenance issues was maybe just kind of a final straw that, that tipped things over. So then bring us back to the kernel maintenance issues and the fighting that was going on over rust in the kernel and a maintainer blocking and all that. Everything that, if you need to recap, check out last week's when Jeff talked about it. So it appears folks have decided to create a rust kernel policy to avoid future conflicts it lays out key topics like how rust for linux is not an effort by the rust project or the rust foundation uh, how it says how many key kernel maintain or, or it says how many key kernel maintainers do support rust in the kernel and how changes are not allowed to be introduced if a C change breaks a Rust enabled build. And with the exception uh, for Rust subsystems. Uh, also, it states that duplicate 
duplicate C or Rust based drivers are not allowed. However, subsystems may temporarily allow them to make it easier to introduce Rust support and get it working smoothly. You know, so so this policy it was uh, published by Miguel o- Ojeda. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, uh, and he is a Rust for Linux contributor. Um, so, you know, personally, I guess I would feel maybe a little confident about this policy if it actually came from Linus Torvalds, Greg KH, the Linux Foundation. Um, I'm not sure how individual contributors, especially one aligned with Rust, um, is is doing this policy and, and maybe i haven't seen it yet but i guess at this point it just kind of seems like you know if an employee you know me is like i'm gonna write a policy and tell my ceo ceo how you should act i don't know <laughs> but, M- miguel miguel is essentially the rust for linux guy he's right he has been the guy that is that has made all of this happen so like if, if i were to, if you were to ask me like who who is the one person that could write the rust the rust kernel policy that it would be him but he's also on the Rust side. I guess I would like to see support on the C side of the kernel. Saying, oh, I see yeah. what you mean. I see what you mean. You know, we're the C guys. You know, the, it's the C guys who are telling the Rust guys to get out of here, that your code doesn't belong here, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm maybe exaggerating. So now it's Rust guys saying, oh, here's a policy so you can accept our stuff. Where I'd really feel more comfortable if is the C guys saying, here, here's the policy, you know, we'll accept mm-hmm. your stuff under these conditions because, you know, it's, you know, like me saying, no, boss, you're going to accept this because I wrote this policy saying you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to remember, this actually got started as a hobby for one of the Linux kernel maintainers. Yeah, and then everybody realized that it might be a good idea to be able to do this. Um, yeah, so I, I, I have thoughts on this. First off, um, there were bound to be conflicts. We talked about this last week. There were bound to be conflicts between the C coders and the Rust coders. They come at things from a different perspective. It does add to the maintenance burden for the C maintainers. So, like, it's not surprising that there are conflicts and that it's taking time to work through it. Um, I I understand that Hector is just tired and needs some time away from it, and that's fine. Good for him. Like, good for him for realizing that he needed to step down taking some time away hopefully he'll find you know something else to be able to to pay his bills and be able to move on to something that he really enjoys um we like we wish him well um i don't think that and especially because we have other people already stepping up to maintain it it sounds like the uh the apple uh linux on the apple silicon is going to continue on there's a lot of people that are using it now and are excited about it. it it seems to me that rust in the kernel is going to continue on at least for now and again, we talked about that last week. So um, this in and of itself probably should not have been a huge story, right? Like in some ways, of course it is. But on the other hand, it's it's kind of, it's normal around the kernel that people burn out, people get tired of doing it, and they move on. And, you know, dozens of people have gone through the same thing and have not written a huge blog post about it. And we've probably never talked about it. Every once in a while, we'll talk about one that, that says, I need, I need a break from it. Every once in a while. And then sometimes right away afterwards, you have another one that has issues with the kernel. <laughs> hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there.